Hello everybody. So today we will look at the mechanics of calculating Pearson correlation coefficient for a set of two variables. So in our case, we have uh, asset X and asset Y, and we have ending market values or ending values of these assets, uh, asset X and asset Y for six years. So we have six data points for each variable. So we're interested in portfolio management and in finance, we're interested in the correlation between the returns of these two assets. So the variables that we're interested in, X and Y, are the returns of assets X and asset Y. So uh, before we start, I'll just say that most uh, statistical software packages or even Excel uh, can calculate Pearson correlation coefficient pretty pretty fast. Uh, it's just one formula that you need to type in and you'll get the result. Uh, the purpose of today's lesson is to see how you would do it manually uh, with a calculator. For example, if you had a paper-based test and all you had was a, was a uh, piece of paper and a calculator and you would need to plug in these values into this formula. Um, I will use Excel to uh, illustrate the calculation. But obviously, if you had Excel at your disposal, you would just type in the formula and you would get the answer. And I'll show it at the end. But nevertheless, so let's convert our starting data points into the variables that we will be working with. So the variables we're interested in are the returns of the two assets. So we'll say return of asset X and return of asset Y. So the return of asset X for the year 2009 is the ending market value of 120 divided by the beginning market value of 100 minus 1. Alternatively, it's the ending market value minus the beginning market value divided by the beginning market value. You'll get the same result. So I will use just one of these formulas. And uh, Excel will help me do that without using a calculator. So it is the ending market value divided by the beginning market value minus 1. So the return of asset X during the year 2009 is 20%. So we started with $100 and we ended with $120. So we do the same with asset Y. So during 2009, asset Y returned 15%. So we, uh, with Excel, I can just drag it down and copy down the formula, and it will calculate the returns for each year for each asset. So for example, during 2011, my asset X returned 75.93%. And during the year 2010, asset Y returned 100% because we went from 230 to 460. One notable change is now we started with six observations for each variable, but now we got to five observations for each variable. Why? Because uh, by definition, to have an annual return, you need a beginning market value and an ending market value. So we'll lose one year of observations. So now, before we can plug in these numbers, so remember, this is our variable X now, and this is our variable Y. We need to plug them in into this big formula. So I will break it down into components and then use those components to put them together and, and uh, plug them into this formula. So uh, I will use X and Y notation for now the returns of X and Y. So return of X is we already calculated it. So I'll just say it's 20%. The return of asset Y for 2009 is 15%. And then I will copy down the formulas to make sure that uh, I have observations for each year. Now, what else will we need? We will need X times Y. So that's a new variable. That's the product of the return on asset X and return on asset Y for each year. So I will need that. Uh, I will also need the square of the return on asset X, and I will need the square of the return on asset Y. So I will need a separate column for those two uh, variables as well. So X times Y is the product of the returns of asset X and asset Y. So this is the product X times Y. So it's the 3%. I will use the percentage notation 
going forward just to be consistent but you may as well use decimal notation if you do it manually uh 20 percent is the same as 0.2 and 15 percent is the same as 0.15 when you multiply those numbers together 0.2 times 0.15 you should get a 0.03 which is the same as saying three percent i will stick to the notation of percentages uh but in math uh we typically prefer working with decimals and at the end uh depending on what the answer is when we interpret it we go back to percentages or stay uh in decimal so x times y we copy down the formula as well and we get uh, negative 15% times the 17%, we get negative 2.7%, for example. So that's our variable x times y. Our variable x squared is what it is. It's the square of this variable x. So we have the 20% squared, and we get 4%. So you can check that by doing on your calculator, doing 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, you should get 0 0.04 which is 4%. Again, copy down the formula, and Excel does it for us. So you can see it in the formula bar that it's doing it for us. Uh, y squared is the square of the variable y. So let me do that real quick. So 15% squared is 2.3%. And we can't copy down the formula also. So now, what is this letter E? E of x, y is the expected value of the variable x times y expected value of the variable is the same as saying arithmetic average now excel has uh, a handy formula called average uh, but if we did it manually we would need to take so for example e of x expected value of x is the average of these five values so it's the arithmetic average. If we did it manually, we would need to find the sum of these five values and divide it by five. So let me calculate the sum as if you were doing it manually and the average uh, for each one of these columns. So sum of these columns is just the, uh, the sum of, of, the, of these values. So it's sum of values and this column so it's 145 percent 145 percent divided by five will give us the average so i can do that or i can use the the formula that excel has it's called average average of these five values is 29 percent so if we were to interpret what 29 percent was is uh we would say that asset x on average returned 29 percent per year for the last five years which is which is pretty good i wish i had that return uh and we do that same thing let me get rid of this because this was autofilled uh the sum of the five values for each column and then once we copy and paste that formula across all five columns we should get the sum of the values in that column and then we can do the same for average so for example the negative 0.671 percent is the average of these five values which is the same thing as the expected value of x times y so negative 6.71 percent would go in here into this formula the 29.03 percent would go in here and 20.07% would go in here, and so on and so forth. So now this formula is, uh, uh, consists of a numerator and a denominator, and denominator is a combination of two different square root terms. So let me break it down into components, calculate those components separately, and then get, in, get, get back into uh, the answer. So let me denote my numerator as the expected value of x y minus the expected value of x times expected value of y so i'll just denote uh it like this for now expected value of x times expected value of y uh 
and for my denominator I'll have two different square roots so I will just say that my um, first term in the denominator I will call it denominator 1 and the second term I will call it denominator 2 the first square root term is the square root of expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x. So it will be square root of, and be careful with your brackets here, expected value of x squared minus the square of, oops, minus expected value of x and then that whole thing squared so and then close the bracket denominator 2 the second term in the denominator is the same thing but with the variable y so is the square root of expected value of y squared minus expected value of y then squared so now let's start with the numerator. The numerator in turn has the expected value of the product minus the product of the expected values of the two variables. So the expected value of the two variables, we will need the expected value of x, we will need the expected value of y, and then we'll need the product of the expected values of x and y. And then we'll get to our numerator. So expected value of x times y is the average of these five values because these values are the products uh, of the two variables. So average is negative 6.71 percent. So let's just point to that. Expected value of x is the average of these five values is the 29 percent. So let's point to that. Uh, expected value of y is the 20.07%. And now the product of expected values is 29% times the 20%. So it's the 29% times the 20%. And that should give us... Actually, no, I'm sorry. We already have the expected value of x and expected value of y here. That's the, the reason I put them in here. So let's use these values, 29% times the 20%, which should give us 5.83%. Um, now the numerator is expected value of the product minus the product of the expected values. So it's the negative 0.671% minus the product of the expected values, which should give us negative 12.54% is our entire numerator. Now let's work on the denominator. So for the denominator 1, we will need expected value of x squared. We will need the square of the expected value of x, which is e of x and then squared and then we'll need the same two things for uh, variable y expected value of y squared and then we'll need the expected value of y then squared and then we'll get to our denominator 1 to our denominator 2 and then um, we'll plug it into our overall formula. So the expected value of the variable x squared, these are our variables x squared for each year. The expected value of that is 24%. The expected value of x is 29%, and then we have to square it. So 29% squared will give us 8.4%. Expected value of y squared is the 22%. And then expected value of y is 20% squared will give us 
4.03%. Now we're ready to calculate the denominator uh, term number one, which is the square root of expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x. So let's use the square root function uh, of Excel uh, for, for this illustration. Expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x. That's 39.8%. The second term in the denominator, which is the square root term. So let's use the square root function of Excel again square root of expected value of y squared minus the square of the expected value of y. That's 42.6%. Now we have our numerator and we have our two denominator terms, so we're ready to compute our fraction, which is the Pearson correlation coefficient. So it's our numerator divided by the product of the two denominator terms, denominator 1 times the denominator 2. So we get a Pearson correlation coefficient of negative 0.74025. Now again, this illustration was meant for those who want to learn how to do this manually with a, with a calculator. If we had Excel at our disposal, Excel has a very handy formula uh, called correlation, corel. And then uh, the inputs into that function are array 1 and array 2, and the arrays are our returns of asset x and asset y. So if we plug it in, returns of x and return of y, we would get the same exact answer as we did when doing it manually. So let me change my precision here, the same exact correlation coefficient. Now, what does this mean? How do you interpret this negative 0.74? So uh, Pearson correlation coefficient takes values of uh, between negative one and positive one inclusive. Uh, positive number one means that the two variables are perfectly positively correlated. Uh, a negative correlation coefficient means that they're negatively correlated, meaning that if one asset goes up, the other asset tends to go down uh, with a strength of 74%. So the correlation coefficient is pretty strong. When it's negative, it doesn't mean that the values, that the assets are not correlated. They are, in fact, very strongly correlated, but the direction of the correlation is negative. And one thing to point out is that Pearson correlation coefficient only measures the linear dependence of the two variables. So if our variables x and y had uh, had been dependent, but in a nonlinear fashion, Pearson correlation coefficient would likely not capture that relationship. So uh, the purpose of this video was to illustrate how to compute the negative 0.074 uh, given the, uh, the two variables. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you.